There are only two sides to this question. Every man must be for the United States or against it. There can be no neutrals in this war, only patriots and traitors. Stephen Douglas. Douglas, an opponent of Abraham Lincoln, made this statement reflecting his perspective on the United States and the divisions leading up to the Civil War. The story of Baudry Robert Beau Bergdahl begs this same question 160 years later. Is Bo Bergdahl a traitor or a patriot? In today's video, we're going to go into a deep dive into this fascinating case, Bergdahl's history and state of mind before the incident, the timeline of events, the conspiracy theories, and keep watching for what we, the Bad Things crew at Bad Things, think most likely happened. Bergdahl was born in Sun Valley, Idaho in 1986. Bergdahl and his older sister were both educated at home by their mother. The family attended the Orthodox Presbyterian Sovereign Redeemer Church. Bergdahl studied and practiced fencing and martial arts before switching to ballet classes at the Sun Valley Ballet School in Ketchum, Idaho, and spent 2007 and 2008 in a Buddhist monastery. Bergdahl entered basic training in the United States Coast Guard in 2006, but was discharged after 26 days for psychological concerns, receiving an uncharacterized discharge as an entry-level applicant. Bergdahl joined the United States Army in 2008 and completed infantry school at Fort Benning, Georgia. He was then assigned to the 1st Battalion, 501st Infantry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division, headquartered at Fort Richardson, Alaska. According to specialist Jason Fry, Bergdahl, who Fry characterized as a recluse but focused and well-behaved, told him before his deployment to Afghanistan, if this deployment is lame, I'll just walk off into the mountains of Pakistan. May 2009, Bergdahl's unit deployed to the outpost Mest Malik to conduct counterinsurgency operations. Bergdahl began to study Pashto, an East Iranian language, and according to Fry, began to spend more time with Afghans than with his platoon. Bergdahl's father characterized his son as psychologically isolated to military investigators at this time. On June 25, 2009, the first lieutenant of Bergdahl's battalion, Brian Bradshaw, was killed by a roadside IED near the village of Yayakel, not far from Bergdahl's outpost. Bergdahl's father believes that Bradshaw and Bergdahl became close at the National Training Center and that Bradshaw's death affected Bergdahl's perspective on why he was stationed there. On June 27, 2009, Bergdahl sent an email to his parents. This email confirmed Bergdahl's, what many have called, unpatriotic stance on the occupation of Afghanistan. Mom, Dad, the future is too good to waste on lies, and life is way too short to care for the damnation of others, as well as to spend it helping fools with their ideas that are wrong. I have seen their ideas and I am ashamed to even be American. The horror of the self-righteous arrogance that they thrive in is all revolting, he would say. Later in the email, his disillusionment with his deployment is clearly stated when saying, The system is wrong. I am ashamed to be an American, and the title of U.S. soldier is just a lie of fools. The U.S. Army is the biggest joke the world has to laugh at. It is the army of liars, backstabbers, fools, and bullies. The few good SGTs are getting out as soon as they can. I am sorry for everything here. These people need help, yet what they get is the most conceited country in the world telling them that they are nothing and that they are stupid, that they have no idea how to live. We don't even care when we hear each other talk about running their children down in the dirt streets with our armored trucks. We make fun of them in front of their faces and laugh at them for not understanding we are insulting them. I am sorry for everything. The horror that is America is disgusting. Three days later, Bergdahl vanished from his post in Afghanistan. June 30, 2009 
Bergdahl disappears from a base in the Paktika province of Afghanistan, close to the Pakistani border. July 2, 2009. Two anonymous U.S. officials tell the Associated Press that Bergdahl just walked off his base with three Afghans following his shift. July 18, 2009. The Taliban publishes an online video of Bergdahl expressing his fear of being unable to return home. Bergdahl also claims that he was following a patrol when he was captured. July 19, 2009. The Pentagon confirms that Bergdahl is missing. July 22, 2009. Over 500 people attend a vigil in Haley, Idaho, supporting Bergdahl and his family. December 25, 2009. The Taliban released a video of Bergdahl, who appears to be in good health, delivering an extended critique of the U.S. military operation. June 16, 2011. The army has announced that Specialist Bergdahl has been promoted to sergeant. August 29, 2011. According to U.S. officials, direct U.S. talks with the Taliban had progressed into a substantive negotiation before they were stopped by Afghan officials who feared the discussions would undermine President Hamid Karzai. May 9, 2012 Bergdahl's parents expressed optimism that negotiations or a prisoner transfer could result in the return of their son. Bob Bergdahl expresses concern to a local newspaper that the U.S. government has not done enough to secure his son's release. May 27, 2012 President Obama called Bergdahl's parents to reassure them that he and the U.S. Department of Defense were doing everything possible to secure Bergdahl's release. June 20, 2013 the Taliban proposed an agreement in which Bergdahl would be released in exchange for five of their most senior operatives being held at Guantanamo Bay. January 15, 2014 U.S. officials said they received a new video of Bergdahl, believed to have been filmed within the past month, proving he is alive. February 18, 2014 Bergdahl's family expresses cautious optimism about reports of renewed efforts by the Obama administration to secure his release. May 31, 2014 The Taliban handed Bergdahl over to U.S. Special Forces in exchange for the release of five Guantanamo detainees, according to administration officials. However, the question of whether Bergdahl is a hero or a deserter immediately surfaced. June 2, 2014. Afghanistan's foreign ministry criticized the United States for exchanging Taliban prisoners to secure Bergdahl's release. According to American officials speaking to the Associated Press, the Pentagon concluded in 2012 that Bergdahl deserted his unit, which, according to members of his unit, placed them in danger. June 13, 2014. Bergdahl arrives at the Brook Army Medical Center at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio. June 16, 2014. Army officials say they are investigating the facts and circumstances surrounding Bergdahl's disappearance. August 6, 2014. Bergdahl, who had by now returned to regular duty, is interrogated by the Army regarding his disappearance. August 21, 2014. According to the Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office, the Pentagon violated the law when it exchanged Bergdahl for five Taliban leaders because it did not notify the congressional committees at least 30 days in advance and used funds from a wartime account. December 19, 2014 The Army reports that its investigation has concluded. March 25, 2015 Bergdahl is accused of desertion and misconduct in the presence of the enemy. March 26, 2015 Bergdahl's attorney releases a statement in which Bergdahl claims he was tortured repeatedly by the Taliban. September 17, 2015 A hearing under Article 32 begins to decide whether Bergdahl should face a military prosecution for desertion. 
October 9, 2015. An army officer, according to Bergdahl's counsel, recommends that Bergdahl face a reduced court-martial, which would involve a military system similar to civilian tribunals that manage misdemeanors and no prison time. Bergdahl's guilty plea was accepted after protracted legal challenges on November 3, 2017, and he was sentenced to be dishonorably discharged, reduced in rank, and fined $1,000 per month from his pay for 10 months, with no prison time. The sanction and rank reduction were to take immediate effect while the discharge was suspended, pending an automatic appeal. February 2021 Bergdahl filed a petition with the United States District Court for the District of Columbia to have his conviction and sentence expunged. August 2, 2021 The Justice Department filed a motion to dismiss Bergdahl's petition. March 2023 Bergdahl obtained a partial victory in the U.S. District Court case. Senior Judge Reggie Walton partially granted the petition to dismiss filed by the government. July 6, 2023. A federal judge overturned Bergdahl's dishonorable discharge from the United States Army, approximately six years after the former soldier was convicted of desertion and misconduct. U.S. District Judge Reggie B. Walton decided that the military judge who ordered the dishonorable discharge did not disclose that he had applied to be an immigration judge, an executive branch position, during the Trump administration, creating a potential conflict of interest. We all love a good conspiracy, and the Bergdahl case comes along with some of those, as do most government or military controversies. Bergdahl was released to distract the public from the VA scandal. After a news outlet reported that Bergdahl's release shifted the resignation of Veterans Affairs Secretary Eric Shinseki from the front page, conservatives on Twitter asserted that this was always the Obama administration's intention. Exactly as intended, the story of the return of Sergeant Bo Bergdahl has dominated news coverage, making the VA scandal yesterday's news, wrote one correspondent, adding, We won't forget our veterans, a group which Bergdahl, by the way, will soon be joining, in all likelihood. In 2014, the Department of Veterans Affairs was embroiled in a scandal involving lengthy wait times in its healthcare system, particularly at one Phoenix facility. Congress and the White House subsequently made measures to reform the VA. Officials at the Phoenix VA hospital were accused of keeping a secret waiting list of veterans seeking medical care. This list was concealed from federal regulators, who were instead provided with documents that grossly underreported the wait time for Phoenix patients to see a doctor. The confidential wait list concealed the fact that patients had to wait an average of 115 days to see a primary care physician. CNN reported that as many as 40 veterans died while on the hospital's waiting list, and an official investigation decided that the wait time contributed to the fatalities. Bergdahl was a U.S. spy. Bergdahl had been held captive for five years, but U.S. officials said they had to act immediately because his health and safety were suddenly at risk. Alex Jones's Infowars implied Bergdahl's life was in danger because he was a covert U.S. agent whose cover had been blown when the White House accidentally disclosed the identity of the CIA's highest-ranking operative in Afghanistan. According to the website, Bergdahl may have actually been an embedded intelligence asset who allowed himself to be captured in order to infiltrate the Haqqani network, yet was ultimately endangered by the Obama administration's blunder. Bergdahl is a Taliban sympathizer. Bergdahl contemplated joining the French Foreign Legion or traveling to a war-torn region of Africa to teach villagers self-defense before deciding to join the army to help the Afghan people. According to a 2012 Rolling Stone article by the late Michael Hastings, Bergdahl became rapidly disillusioned and wrote in his final email to his parents that he was dissatisfied with the American military. Several days later, he left the base.
Not surprisingly, these remarks were not well received, especially by the right-wing media. According to a post on Joe the Plumber's website, the Taliban might have sent us the Manchurian POW. According to an article titled, Did the Obama White House Trade Five Terrorists for a Taliban Sympathizer? According to Breitbart, the Taliban claimed in 2010 that Bergdahl had converted to Islam and was instructing militants on bomb-making and ambushing convoys. Bergdahl had also changed his name to Abdullah, the Taliban claimed, though the mainstream media largely ignored the story, seeing it as comparable to the tale of Sergeant Brody in the fictional Homeland television series on Showtime, wrote Breitbart. The Defense Department characterized the report as propaganda. Former Congressman Alan West wrote on his website that Bergdahl's being alive is suspicious. Islamic jihadists don't generally take U.S. troops prisoner, they execute them, often in the primitively brutal manner of ritual disemboweling and beheading, he wrote. So, why has the Haqqani network held Sergeant Bergdahl all these years? He added. So, what likely happened in the Bergdahl controversy? Bergdahl's walking off his base is likely a combination of his mental state and possibly illegal substance abuse. Bergdahl stated that he left his post in Afghanistan in an attempt to trigger a massive search and attract the attention of a general so that he could discuss what he perceived to be problems with his unit's leadership. Major General Kenneth Dahl told a packed tribunal at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio that Bergdahl believed the problems were so severe that they endangered his platoon. Dahl said that Bergdahl intended to walk approximately 19 miles from his post to the forward operating base. He expected to arrive at the operating base after a search had begun and believed this would generate a PR event that might convince a general to hear him speak about the issues. He felt it was his duty to intervene, Dahl explained. Dahl remarked that Bergdahl's perceptions of his unit were completely off the mark. Bergdahl erroneously believed that his sergeant major had joined the army to be a rapist, to be a thief. Dahl said that this officer's record was spotless. Bergdahl allegedly claimed that someone in his unit desecrated what he believed to be Afghan graves by knocking over rocks designating them, but he could not corroborate this claim. In a diary entry written shortly before Bergdahl left for basic training in Georgia and more than a year before he wandered off base in Afghanistan, the young recruit wrote, I know that there is light in this darkness and that I can actually reach it if I keep walking, keep moving to it. This excerpt from Bergdahl's journal, written before his 2009 detention by the Taliban, is just one of many that suggest a restless soldier anxious to run away. The Washington Post obtained Bergdahl's journal from an acquaintance of the young soldier that portrayed a vulnerable and tormented young man who was often psychologically at odds with others. Bergdahl referred to himself as the lone wolf of deadly nothing and mentioned having plans shortly before he reportedly left the Afghanistan military base. The published excerpts from Bergdahl's journal show crucial aspects of his personality. Bergdahl describes a darkness surrounding him in his writings and appeared to possess deeper psychological unease. I will not lose this mind, this world I have deep inside, he wrote shortly before he deployed. I will not lose this passion of beauty. In one diary excerpt from 2009, repetitions of the phrase Velcro or zipper, Velcro or zipper, Velcro or zipper, covered nearly two pages of his journal entry. Bergdahl was not acclimated to extended periods of inactivity, and one journal entry was prophetic of what would happen later. One day, if I make it out of this, I will go around the world. I will not use airplanes, but only trains, boats, vehicles, and, if I still have them, my feet, he wrote. Walk us to the end of this, walk on, and walk us out of here he added. With his mental state worsening during his deployment, it has been speculated that Bergdahl turned to drugs to cope. 
A group of Afghan villagers told the Washington Post that they spotted Bergdahl immediately after he walked out of his base. They told the newspaper that they had forgotten their 2010 sighting of Bergdahl, who appeared to be intentionally heading towards Taliban strongholds, until they saw his face on the news. We think he was probably high after smoking hashish, Ibrahim Manakhel, the district's intelligence chief, told the Washington Post. Why would an American want to find the Taliban? Villagers reported that Bergdahl walked through the area in a trance. They later revealed to Afghan investigators that they had warned the American about entering their hazardous location. They tried to tell him not to go there, that it is dangerous, but he kept going over the mountain. The villagers tried to give him water and bread, but he didn't take it, Manachel said. No matter what reasons Bergdahl had for walking off base, his actions directly affected the soldiers in his platoon and others in the area. After it was verified that Bergdahl was AWOL, the army began searching for him. According to personnel from his platoon, attacks against US forces in Paktika province increased after his disappearance. According to soldiers who took part in the search for Bergdahl, at least six members of his battalion died during the search. In July 2009, Master Sergeant Mark Allen's unit was ambushed by insurgents armed with small arms, machine guns and rocket-propelled grenades while on a mission to acquire information about Bergdahl from two Afghan villages. Allen, who was struck in the head, was rendered irrevocably unable to walk or communicate due to the injury. He passed away on October 12, 2020. Officers who served in Afghanistan stated that diverting resources to locate Bergdahl delayed the closure of combat outpost Keating, where 300 Taliban insurgents killed eight American soldiers on October 3, 2009. Were Bergdahl's actions an attempt to wake up the military's leadership? Was he a spy or a Taliban sympathizer? Before you decide, let us remind you of one thing. Four of the five Taliban members released from Guantanamo Bay by the Obama administration in 2014 in exchange for Bergdahl are now members of the Islamic fundamentalist group's new hardline government in Afghanistan, where a council of Islamic scholars determine the legal system and the Islamic government will be guided by Islamic law rather than democratic principles. Please comment below and give us your take on this controversial case. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.